There's a lot going on in Chloe Zhao's new film, Nomadland, streaming on Hulu, not only because of its variety of incidents but because of its heterogeneous composition. Though it runs just under two hours, it's two movies in one, a documentary and a fiction. These two motifs hardly coalesce to become a hybrid, though, the film is not a docudrama. Rather, the two elements work against each other, each revealing the fault lines of the other, the fictional side remains bound to, and limited by, the most conventional and unquestioned observational mode of documentary filmmaking, while the documentary aspect strains against the simplifying framework of the drama in which it's confined. The story is rooted in an actual event, as stated in an opening title card, the closing, in January, 2011, of U.S. Gypsum's facility in Empire, Nevada, because of reduced demand for sheetrock. The movie's protagonist, Fern, Frances McDormand, had long lived in Empire with her husband, Bo, who worked for the company, in the mine. After he died, she stayed in the area, but Empire is a company town, her home was company housing, and when the mine closed she was forced out. Wanting nonetheless to remain in Empire, and her motive drops into the movie only belatedly, she decides to live in her van. The documentary aspect of Nomadland, which was written, directed, and edited by Zhao, and is based on the non-fiction book of the same title by Jessica Bruder, arises from the details of Fern's changed way of living. She has elaborately renovated her van to make it home-like, and, with Christmas approaching, she takes seasonal work at an enormous Amazon shipping center in the vicinity. She has a reservation, alphabetized under MCD, at a trailer park, as part of Amazon's so-called camper force, she's one of a legion of itinerant workers finding a temporary harbor there. That very detail offers a jolt of investigative observation. As the gig winds down, an older colleague whom she befriends there, Linda May, played by a woman of the same name, invites her to come to a large gathering of van dwellers in Arizona, run by a charismatic and empathetic organizer named Bob Wells, also playing himself. When Fern can't find other work near Empire she decides to go, and the gathering is the first of many waystations on her long path of wandering. Along the way, she meets a woman named Swanky, played by a person of the same name, who's on the road for the last time, she has terminal cancer and, rather than living out her days in a hospital, searches for the wonders of nature while she still can. Fern keeps crossing paths with Linda May, who lost her job in 2008, found herself in emotional and economic desperation, and, with only meager social security benefits to sustain her, is able to subsist only by living in a van.